welcome back to the Mill Creek Government Channel. I'm Jessica Stutzman. Viewers, pretend with me for a moment that you're a child again, and you have a deep need to imagine, play, create, and explore. All of those desires are fostered within our very own amazing Experience Children's Museum. With us today is the Executive Director of the Experience Children's Museum, Ainsley Brozig. Ainsley, thanks you, thank you so much for joining us here today. I really appreciate it, and I'm so excited to learn about what you guys are doing. Well, thanks so much for having me. It's been a busy place the past couple months. It has been, and there's so much construction. There's so much new. It's been a whirlwind. So let's talk about let's talk about that construction and what phase one looks like, and then. When, is, when does phase two start? Yeah, so phase one opened in June, June 21st, and that is our new addition next to the Children's Museum. So you might remember we had an outdoor classroom space, um, and so we built a two-story, almost 20,000 square foot addition onto that property. Um, and so we are currently operating out of that. And then phase two is a renovation of our current building and that will open in May. Mm -hmm. And we are super excited. It, that, that whole piece coming together, um, both sides will give us just under 40,000 square feet. Wow. So I have heard a lot of people visiting and they say this is like, this is similar to like a children's museum of like a big city. Yeah, you know what I mean. Mm -hmm. Like Erie is right on the map with mm -hmm. with you know those across the country. Where did you have the vision for this expansion? Like, how did all of this start? Mm -hmm. You know, snowballing. So we actually started this process in 2017. Um, and really took a look at our community and what does our community need for our children's from a children's museum. You know, one thing to remember is we don't just serve the city of Erie, Mill Creek. We are a Corey's Children's Museum, Union City's Children's mm -hmm. Museum. Um, we see visitors up to 100 miles away. Mm -hmm. um, so we really looked at what does our community need, what do they need us to be, and from that we kind of learned that the current building served us well, but it was 100 years old. Mm -hmm. um, it was never meant to be a children's museum. And we really look deep into um, what do we need to be for the future, for the kids in the future, and that building could not do it. Mm -hmm. um, we really were strapped with how many people we could see. And our ultimate goal is to see more kids and families in our community. So this new museum, I'm so glad you brought up those other cities. We actually worked very closely with the museum in Buffalo. Mm -hmm. um, we know that children's museums are catalysts for change. We know that they are purposely put in communities right in the center where they need action, where they need people to come. So us remaining in downtown Erie, um, we are helping to serve the food hall down the street and the uh, Gordon's Meat Market and the other entities that are there. We're supplying you know, patrons for the sweet shop and really doing our community some good by being where we are. So we're thrilled and it's been quite an amazing ride. Mm -hmm. Now did you ever have to shut down the museum and, you know, and turn away visitors? Uh, we, three weeks was the transition of change, but we really needed to stay open. Mm -hmm. So it is amazing what construction uh, crews can do. We were able to remain fully operational um, in the old building while they constructed the new. Mm -hmm. And then we flip-flopped. Mm -hmm. So now they're working in the old. Um, but to give you some idea, you know, you mentioned how do we come up with these ideas. So um, there is a local architect that builds the building. We used Weber Murphy Fox. Um, but then there's also a children's museum architect. And these are the people that, this is what they do, right? Mm -hmm. They create um, fun experiences for kids and families. So we hired a company out of Cincinnati, Ohio, um, called JRA. They are credited, if you've ever been to Crayola, mm -hmm. any of the Crayola factories they've done. They did the Steelers roller coaster at Kennywood. Um, they have done children's museums in China and Italy, across the country. Uh, Naples Children's Museum is one of their claim to fame. Um, so they really get children's museums mm -hmm. and that's comforting because yeah. if you're going to spend this kind of money, you want someone that knows what we need to have. Right. And you know, I've been to your, the Children's Museum so many times with my daughter and, and I just can't believe it. She's six now and she still enjoys it. Like mm -hmm. what age do you mm -hmm. think 
the Children's Museum services. So our old museum, our business plan really served kids eight and under. Mm -hmm. And when we started taking a look at this new building and this new museum, you know, I said, this is not a good business model. After eight years old, they're outgrowing us, mm -hmm. which is what, first grade, second grade? Mm -hmm. um, and to be able to serve more kids and families, we've got to expand this age range. Mm -hmm. We talked a lot to school districts and we said, you know, will you bring your kids to us? And they said, well, they outgrow you. Mm -hmm. So we need more opportunities for those older kids. So the new museum, actually, the exhibits meet PA state standards for curriculum and they match up to fifth grade. Mm -hmm. So we're really excited about that. So that's, you know, about your average 10 year old. Yeah. And then um, we'll do programming in classes for kids through middle school. Mm -hmm. um, most recently, we're about to launch a girls in STEAM program, mm -hmm. which is science, technology, engineering, art, and math. Mm -hmm. And that is 100% geared towards middle school girls. Yeah. So it's really opened up a lot of opportunity for us. Yeah, I love that so much, um, especially like you said, girls in science. I think that's fantastic. Um, I think it's fascinating how these adult architects, like I think, do you come home and ask your kids like what they think <laughs> would be fun? Like how did they come up with these amazing ideas that they came up with? And mm -hmm. um, you know, like I said, Lo enjoys it so much, but um, so let's talk about the exhibits mm -hmm. because they are really neat. And I think as an adult, it just transports you back in time. Yeah. So we, children's museums are traditionally focused on their community, okay? So if you go to Buffalo, there's a lot about Canal Side, because that's where they sit. Um, a lot about Buffalo, it's named after Ralph Wilson. So, you know, they talk about the bills and, and all of the things that makes Buffalo a proud city. So our children's museum focuses a lot on Erie, of course. So we decided to pick names of our galleries that focused on our life here. So um, the town upstairs is called My Erie. Mm -hmm. It's amazing. I mean, I'm completely biased, but it is a kid-sized town. You might remember we did have one in the old museum. Mm -hmm. This is nothing like you've seen before. Um, it is an entire second floor. Mm -hmm. And um, we want kids to be proud of their community, proud of where they come from. So right when you walk in, there's a big, huge Welcome to Erie sign. Mm -hmm. um, there is the Warner Theater, or mm -hmm. a replica Warner Theater. There's a diner that kind of replicates Sarah's. Mm -hmm. um, there is the grocery store, which replicates a local grocery store. Um, there's a farm. And that was really important, too, because we were thinking, you know, there's a lot of different jobs that make up a community. And so we put the farm strategically next to the grocery mm -hmm. store to, te to teach kids where their food comes from. Mm -hmm. And PA has a great uh, agricultural history, so yeah. we want to talk about that with kids. Mm -hmm. There's a milking cow, too, that you okay. can milk. Um, moving along, there is a pet vet station. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm not sure about your daughter, but we really tend to see these young kids. They, they love taking care of animals, yes. right? They're Mine, all animal yes. lovers. We have vet kits all yes. over the house. And you want to encourage that mm -hmm. because what we look at is we want to teach responsible pet ownership, mm -hmm. right? We don't want kids growing up not taking care of animals and having a respect for animals. So there's a whole area dedicated to being a pet vet, mm -hmm. and we were able to get four or five local veterinarians to sponsor this area, and they get to teach kids about their job. Moving on, there's an uh, auto shop mm -hmm. um, with a little replica car that allows kids to change the tire, change the oil, change the air filter. Um, I'll be honest with you, it's a great tool for adults. <laughs> I was say, I'm not I sure if you to... know how, but no, I, don't. I don't. I don't, and I need to learn. <laughs> so you might want to visit that area. Okay, I'll, be, I'll like Lo and I will. Like we were talking, we, Lo and I have spackled some holes in the house together. So I think we're going to yeah. learn how to change a tire. And it walks you through it. Okay, um, I need that. And so it's amazing. These are life skills, mm -hmm. right? Um, there's a baby nursery where kids just love to rock the mm -hmm. babies. There's a tot spot for our real little visitors. Because remember, we do see kids as young as six months. Mm -hmm. um, so there's a spot just for them. So that's just one floor mm -hmm. in phase one. Um, there's also the water table. Table. So the lower level is called lake life. Mm -hmm. I mean, how can you not? We live on Lake Erie. we got to talk all about the lake. 
So the water table is the second largest in the United States. Wow, that is such an amazing, mm -hmm. you guys should receive an award for that. <laughs> well, that or we're crazy because the price tag is pretty high, but um, it features all things on Lake Erie. And so it is, I think we figured out 28 feet long. Mm -hmm. um, it's huge, it takes up the whole bottom level. And kids love Splashing. I mean, they are not really getting wet, wet. You know no, what I mean? No, they do. But, <laughs> they like, do in this one. Oh, they do. Okay. I was going to say, but they love that. Like, there's uh -huh. just something about the the tactile experience yeah. of putting your hands in water. And is it similar to the old one where you would move the different pieces in order to form different, I don't want to call them currents. Yeah. But. Yeah. So we have a lot of different educational opportunities, way more than the other table had. Again, it focuses on Erie. Mm -hmm. So there is a... Um, there is a part that talks about the canal mm -hmm. and damming and there's, uh, you can split logs. Mm -hmm. You can take a car across a bridge which replicates like the Gudgeonville Bridge or some of the great historic bridges we have. Um, the Bicentennial Tower is in there. There is a whole little section that has a rain cloud mm -hmm. and it talks about agriculture but how the lake actually affects our weather. Oh, nice. Because that's really fascinating. Mm -hmm. You know, we don't usually get tornadoes and hurricanes. Mm -hmm. Why? Because of the lake and how mm -hmm. does that affect us? Um, and then of course there's boating and fishing. Um, there are all five land lighthouses represented. So the whole feeling, if you're getting what I'm saying is we want people to be proud of Erie, mm -hmm. right? So we're showcasing everything mm -hmm. because these kids are our future and we don't want them to leave. We want yeah. them to stay. Yeah. Um, also in that area is a ginormous climber. I'm expecting you to go through it. Okay. It does hold adults. Okay. It is quite a workout. Is it? Yes. It is 28 feet tall. Oh it's gosh. two land lighthouses and it's a climber and they mm -hmm. climb from lighthouse to lighthouse oh my gosh. and there's a slide at the end. Okay. So uh, I'm counting on you. We'll I'll need a there. video. You know I'll do it. <laughs> totally. We have a giant bubble exhibit down there. The kids always they love, love that. that. Uh -huh. I don't know what it is about bubbles. I'm um, just you know small bubbles, big bubbles. Uh -huh. They love putting them in the bubble. Mm -hmm. Like it's wild and I love it. I love uh, the, the adults joy. Do too. Yeah, the joy that comes, I think that, again, the parental experience is that, you know, you want your child to learn, but when you see how much fun they're mm -hmm. having, it's like nothing else matters. Mm -hmm. um, there's an ice table, because we live in Erie, why not bring in snow and ice, right? Yeah. So let's play with that. But, you know, one of the things I haven't mentioned is a lot of technology. Okay. There are technology pieces, like in the theater, there's a green screen and whatnot, mm -hmm. but we really stick to our guns. We want to make sure that people are um, doing hands-on learning with their kids. Mm -hmm. No iPads, no phones, mm -hmm. because they just get so much more out of it. Mm -hmm. And I guarantee your daughter is gonna remember that you went through the climber with her, right? Yes. Um, so we really are en enforcing, we want people to spend that time with their kids. Mm -hmm. So and that's just phase one. Yeah, and I feel like it's building those core memories, mm -hmm. like you want them to remember. And you know, we've had you know multiple birthday parties at the Children's Museum, and I love inviting her entire class because it's almost like you know a field trip where mm -hmm. like everybody gets to enjoy it together, mm -hmm. and they're not in a classroom setting. Instead of you know a fifteen minute or thirty minute, twenty minute recess, they get two hours mm -hmm. to just be together and play, and yeah. I love that more than anything. And you'll see some really cool things that go on, problem solving. Mm -hmm. Um, socializing in unscripted ways, right? At school, you're forced to sit together and work on something together. Mm -hmm. When you come to the Children's Museum, they don't see uh, social differences, uh, race differences. They just see, hey, we gotta um, you know, build this dam in the water table. We gotta mm -hmm. work together, mm -hmm. right? So yeah. it's really neat. One yeah. of the neatest things I've seen since we opened is in our theater, um, we had a camp, a summer camp, mm -hmm. and there were kids from all different backgrounds, mm -hmm. okay? They did not know each other before this camp. Mm -hmm. And I went up there and they have put together a performance and they've asked me to sit there and watch them because mm -hmm. they love that, right? And everybody had a job and they all worked together to put on this little performance and mm -hmm. I thought, that's what we're about. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So the teamwork, the mm -hmm. team, team bonding, the camaraderie, mm -hmm. you know, working together. It's so many life skills. Yes. All yes. wrapped in one. Yeah. So yeah. that's just phase one, all uh -huh. those exhibits I mentioned. Phase okay. two, which will open in May, really focuses a lot on the science and art mm -hmm. aspect. So, I mean, talk about amazing. Mm -hmm. um, 
There's an art studio that's being built. That's also where our three classrooms will be mm -hmm. that will hold up to 170 kids, wow. which is amazing. We get a birthday parties going on three at a time. Oh my gosh. Um, really neat space. Yeah. And, and kids love art. They can just express themselves, mm -hmm. you know, and I think there's a lot of times when Lola's painting and, you know, she's like, can I have a sponge instead? And I didn't have a sponge. So I said, well, here's a makeup sponge. Mm -hmm. Like maybe that'll work. And then she's like, can I use my finger? And mm -hmm. I was like, yeah, use your finger. So mm -hmm. they just get to like whatever's in their brain, they yep. get to express that. Yes. Yeah. So this area, it's going to be very messy. Mm -hmm. and the educators have teased me. I might not be able to go in there. I, I don't like mess, mm -hmm. but like that's what makes it fun. Mm -hmm. And our museum designers have challenged me personally and have said, you know, for example, one of the exhibits is spin art. Mm -hmm. Your oh, daughter might yes. have that, right? Mm -hmm. But it's to the next level. It's spin art with a bicycle. Oh my gosh. So you put paint in and you pedal and mm -hmm. paint goes everywhere. I love this. And I said, I'm not sure I'm going to be able to handle this exhibit mm -hmm. because of the mess. Yeah. And they said, but they can't do that at home. And yeah. that's what makes it special. So mm -hmm. the Children's Museum is a place where you can do things that you can't do at home. Mm -hmm. So you want to come back. Yeah. Oh my gosh. This is fantastic. And so that's what I, I there's so many things you guys have thought of um, outside the box. And these are just your exhibits. Mm -hmm. Can you tell me about your events? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So a big chunk of our revenue is obviously membership, admission, and events. Mm -hmm. So we host um, about eight special events a year mm -hmm. that are a little bit more of a cost than a normal ticket. Mm -hmm. um, and they're usually private. So we do them on Saturdays or Sundays and close to the public. You have mm -hmm. to have a special ticket. We most recently had Bluey, mm -hmm. the big blue dog, big blue healer, mm -hmm. I guess he's yes, called. Yes, the Australian um, healer. The kids loved him mm -hmm. um, and we were able to do you know we always tie things in our educators are outstanding mm -hmm. so yes we had bluey who's a character there but we were able every child got a book mm -hmm. a bluey book um, we had bluey snacks so we had healthy snacks that were focused on what bluey would eat mm -hmm. um, we had story time we had um, bluey tattoos and face painting and we always try to sneak in educational components mm -hmm. as well they had some amazing activities where kids did some activities that bluey has done on the show mm -hmm. um, and so that just that was a huge success coming up i mean all of our signature events we have tons for the holidays uh, new year's eve is a huge event that comes up um, you know because a lot of kids do not um, stay up on right. New Year's, so we have New Year's Eve. Mm -hmm. um, we also have uh, multicultural events in February and March. Mm -hmm. One of my favorites is called Future Me, mm -hmm. and it's a kid-sized career fair. Oh. So they get to learn from adults what their job is. Yeah. Um, so we'll have vets, we'll have a firefighter, a policeman, mm -hmm. we'll have a ballet dancer, we'll have an athlete. Mm -hmm. um, and it's just such an amazing day because we want kids to believe they can be anything they want to be. Mm -hmm. That is so sweet. And I think what I love about that too is like they're, usually they want to be multiple things. Mm -hmm. I want to be a ballet dancer and an archaeologist. Yes. And you know what? Do both. Yeah. No one's telling you That's you got to right. be in a box. That's you right. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, um, okay, let's talk about um, some of the nitty gritty details, like admission costs, mm -hmm. um, if there's membership, the hours of operation, where mm -hmm. do I park, just like the, yeah, what, sure. it, what are the questions moms and dads are gonna <laughs> ask, grand grandparents too? Yeah, so everything can be found on our website, which is eriechildrensmuseum.org. Um, admission is $10 a person right mm -hmm. now. Um, when we open phase two, that will go up a little bit, um, but $10 a person. The best deal if you come to the museum is really a membership. Mm -hmm. If you're gonna come maybe four times a year, mm -hmm. that's the best deal. Mm -hmm. um, the base cost is $125 and then you can add on. We really made this decision, you know, no two families look the same, mm -hmm. right? Maybe dad works all the time. Mm -hmm. So maybe you want to put grandma and mom on the membership mm -hmm. because they come. That's fine. I love that. So um, maybe you have a babysitter, mm -hmm. right? So let's get the babysitter on the card mm -hmm. and you can add her on for $25. Mm -hmm. So we really tried to be flexible. Um, the memberships are great deals because we just added, they did go up in price, but we are an official science center mm -hmm. and obviously a children's museum. So your membership gets you discounts at all science centers across the country and children's museums. Wow. And so I just had um, uh, somebody email me and say, 
I don't think people realize the value in this. She yeah. says, we popped into a children's museum, I forget where, and they saved $60 wow. from showing their yes. membership. Yes. So all memberships come with those benefits. Wonderful. Um, our hours right now, we are closed on Tuesdays for deep cleaning, mm -hmm. but we will also be closed um, on Mondays in the winter mm -hmm. uh, months just because uh, you know we like to pack them in during the the end of the week so yeah but when we do close it's for deep cleaning yeah hours are 10 to 5 um, during the week and on Saturday and 1 to 5 on Sundays awesome and I'm sorry did you mention where to park oh so parking so right on the new museum entrance is on 5th and French okay okay um, so if you come up French Street to the left is an Erie Insurance surface lot mm -hmm. on French Street between 4th and 5th, that's all Children's Museum parking. Oh, wonderful. So you can park in there. Now it is busy, so yeah. if that's overflow, um, there is street parking, mm -hmm. and then the EDDC actually has a ramp that's opening um, about a block or two uh, to the west. Okay, great. And so we did talk a little bit about birthday parties. Do you want to touch on just how people can you know, set up their birthday party, mm -hmm. or even, you know, how schools can get in contact with you and set up a field trip. Yeah, so we are booming with field trips, mm -hmm. which is amazing. Um, you know, we would love to see people. Some people say they want to wait till phase two is over. Mm -hmm. I say come both, mm -hmm. because it is overwhelming. When mm -hmm. the new museum's done, it's going to be a lot. And I was going to say, how many hours would you recommend a family setting aside time yeah, to come? Yeah, at least two hours for the mm -hmm. current museum. Mm -hmm. um, when we open the other side, you're probably looking mm -hmm. at three, three and a half. Yeah. Um, depending on what your child's interests are. But all of the information about birthday parties and field trips are on our website. You can contact uh, Christina for birthday parties, mm -hmm. Ashley for education. Um, and they're just wonderful opportunities for people to bring kiddos to the museum. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And like I said, we've had such a, a fun, fun time doing, you know, all birthday parties are great, getting together outside the classroom and whatnot, but I just love that they have the hands-on learning because that's mm -hmm. what's so cool about the Children's Museum is a lot of museums, you just have to like go and stare at the exhibit or they can't yeah. touch it or they really like that dino, but they, you know, they always want to yeah. touch it, but they can't. It's mm -hmm. behind like a you know, a gate or mm -hmm. a you know, fence or something. So yeah. I love that everything, it's for them, it's interactive. Mm -hmm. So One thing I didn't mention, we are gonna have an outdoor classroom space again. Okay. So, and talking about being able to touch things, the mm -hmm. whole entire outdoor classroom, yeah. if your daughter wants to pick you a bouquet of flowers, she can, Aww. it's not hands off. Yeah. Everything we planted out there could be ingested, eaten. Wow. Um, we're gonna have grapes and herbs and all kinds of neat things. So if kids wanna try it, mm -hmm. we're gonna let them. Yeah. Um, they can dig in the dirt. Now I would recommend a change of clothes, yeah. um, but we're gonna let them plant and do things because Kids don't get to play in nature and dirt enough. Yeah. And so we really encourage that. Yeah, it's so good for them. Um, the museum has a small staff, but it's growing. So do you do you need volunteers? Do you need anything to you know make this function mm -hmm. day to day? We are always looking for volunteers. In fact, we're starting a brand new uh, program for volunteers. There's going to be teen volunteers, mm -hmm. maybe teens that need service hours or teens that aren't old enough to work yet. Mm -hmm. We want to get this group in there and they get to go through a really cool volunteer training, do a certain number of hours, and then they can earn rewards. Mm -hmm. um, same thing for adults. You know, maybe you're a retired teacher or maybe your kids are grown, you don't have any grandkids in the area, but you love kids. Mm -hmm. um, we would really could use the help at special events, straightening the grocery mm -hmm. store. Um, you know, part of play is putting away, not mm -hmm. the fun part. Mm -hmm. um, we can always use help with that. We're also looking for people to sew and fix costumes and things like that. So yeah. definitely a need gardening volunteers. That'll be a huge push. Mm -hmm. um, and so all of that is on our website as well. Wonderful. Thank you so much for that. And. Um, I know, again, phase two is on the horizon. What else do you see coming in the future? Anything new? So we have a traveling exhibit space. So when we first open phase two, it will be um, just open, but the traveling exhibit space is a whole nother floor that will not open yet. Mm -hmm. So we can grow into that. Mm -hmm. So what I really see there is we'll work with local children's museums, or not local, but close, children's museums and science centers and borrow exhibits from them. Oh, so we'll be able to put them down there. There's a really cool one about baseball, the science mm -hmm. of baseball. 
Um, and so those would change mm -hmm. monthly or every three months. You know, with the eclipse coming up, mm -hmm. we'll do a whole section on the eclipse down there. And so that's what I love is that will be a whole floor that rotates and that'll keep things fresh yeah. um, and exciting. That is so cool. Um, we've kind of touched on it through the whole show, but how important is it for kids to play while they learn? Like what is the takeaway? Mm -hmm. So a lot of studies that you could look up, you know, say how important play is, of course, but I always leave everybody with this thought. By second grade, kids know if they like math or science. Mm -hmm. And so if we can change that narrative, almost everything we do involves some sort of math or science. Mm -hmm. If we can incorporate play mm -hmm. to get them to really enjoy those subjects and read and, and math and be good students, then we've done our job. Mm -hmm. So using play as a tactic to get children to learn is essential to the future workforce. Mm -hmm. And then hopefully when they're adults, when they're in their career, in their jobs, they think it's fun. Correct. You know, they don't feel like, oh, this, this is, is just, a job. Yeah, I'm just yep. here for a paycheck, but like I'm loving what I do every Correct. day. Correct. Yes. So, yes. Awesome. Thank you so much for being here today. Um, is there anything, you know, again, like your contact information, anything else you want to share with viewers before we close the show? The only thing I'd like to add is we've built this amazing $18 million facility we really need the community to support us. Mm -hmm. Come out and visit, buy a membership, visit our amazing gift shop, by mm -hmm. the way. You'll be definitely going yeah. through it. Yeah. Um, what but, a great, like for Christmas too. Yes. Like I think like you, I, I would just pop in and like, yes. you know, yep. get some Christmas stuff. Um, you know, we really need the community support. We deserve a children's museum like this, but the community has to support it for us to stay afloat. Mm -hmm. So. Um, we built it. We need everybody to yeah. come. Yeah, you built it. They will come. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, Ainsley, so Thank much you. for being here. I am so excited to see. I'm, I'm, I'm actually popping down this weekend. Good. So I'm so excited to see everything that you guys have done in phase one. I'm so excited for phase two. Thank you so much. Yeah. Viewers, um, again, please come support the Experience Children's Museum. They have done so many awesome renovations. Um, you know, bring the kiddos out, your children, your grandchildren you will not be disappointed. It is an amazing place. So I wanna thank you for tuning into the Mill Creek Government Channel and until next time, have a great day.